here to uh, live. All right, well, welcome back to another Foaming at the Mouth Friday live. So we've had, um, last few, we've had some really good guests coming on. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that we had any sort of lack of sort of I guess for this episode, but we decided actually to do something that's kind of simplified a little bit and talk about some uh, really cool things we've been working on. And we've kind of hinted at it over the last few, but we, you know, we just kind of didn't want to, um, you know, do like a sales pitch in the midst of talking about other stuff. But we talked about some really cool materials and uh, brought in some really cool people to sort of show what those products might be able to do. But we've got some uh, other interesting stuff to show off too. So. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, like, what was your sort of highlights of the last couple shows? Because that was, was oh, a lot going uh, on. Oh, yeah, Casey coming in and uh, doing the Pestilence Fountain for Conjoin, that was awesome having her on, and then Six Soaps, uh, Shayna from that, that was really fun too, seeing a soap demo, I had not done that before, so that yeah, was neat. Yeah, yeah, um, another one of those applications where we don't really get too much, um, I don't know, too many customers that really do that, but there's a lot of people out there doing that, and... Obviously, she learned a lot by sort of um, talking to us about different materials, different techniques and stuff. So hopefully that translates out to other people and they can kind of use that info and run with it. Um, so, do do do. All right. Hey, we got some people chiming, tuning in. All right. Jeff 3000, my favorite one. Does that, does that mean us? Or does that mean like the other shows? I don't know. Hopefully somebody likes us out there. Um, hey, what else? Oh, uh, Jeff's asking, what are your tips for thin wall object molds? So are you talking about the parts themselves or the, the mold? I'm assuming the parts. Um, well, if you're doing like a closed mold, then obviously it's, it's all about tool setup. Um, if you take a look at some of our mold making videos, um, the, um, I'm trying to think of what I think it's like the part three. If you go into our mold making playlist on our YouTube channel, watch a couple of those videos because they go through a really good setup of how to get material in through and, and everything. And those are pretty thin wall parts. Um, if you're talking about maybe like thin wall from like brush, maybe a brush application, like a brush in like a urethane or um, roto cast or roto mold or slush cast. Um, actually, we've got an interesting product we'll be talking about a little bit later uh, that you might be able to pull that off. But uh, yeah. So, tip for thin wall, yeah, so I guess the part, he says. Um, main thing is, obviously, viscosity is helpful. However, if you look at a lot of casting materials that are very, very low viscosity, sometimes you give up things like heat distortion or even overall toughness. So, you kind of have to balance it. I don't always say look for, you know, something that's 200 centipoise, because even something that's like six, 700 centipoise is still very easily manageable. Um, and it's all about setting up the tool to where you're filling at the low point, venting at the high point and then using like the techniques we've shown in a lot of our mold making videos with the, with the tall funnel and that gives you the hydraulic pressure to push that through and up and out and as long as you have something that doesn't go off in 90 seconds uh, usually we don't have any problems filling the tool so um, yeah definitely take a, check out the videos our whole mold making uh, playlist it, from A to Z you know if you just take a little time watch a couple of those videos uh, step one through sort of step three and then there's kind of additional ones after that a lot of good uh, tips that um, DJB it, you know I mean I'm one doing a lot of those videos and then sometimes Haley's doing it too but but ultimately there's a whole giant team behind us in our tech department one that has a lot of experience and they've helped us build those videos and, and, and answer all those really hard to answer questions but do it try to simplify it and whatnot and so we had a lot of help here at DJB um, and getting that done. So, some of the unsung heroes, obviously, they don't want to step up and do the video. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's not all me. But uh, anyway, but that's a good question. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, we've actually, we were kind of coming into this one going, oh, we don't have a guest, what are we going to do? But in fact, we've actually had a ton of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of alluded to it. I don't know, what, what, what all do we have going on? Um, I think today we were going to talk about some FP15 and 25 first, which oh, yeah. is exciting. Oh, yeah. We were just playing with this morning, and actually, that's what this is, and we're going to demold it for you guys. Yeah. Are we going to, are we going to do that now? Um, well, let's let's explain. Oh. What we got. Well, let's go down. We'll, let's go through what we're going to talk about. How about that? Sounds good. So we've got um, BJB has always had a really good lineup of 
flexible Euro things. You know, a lot of people in um, rapid prototyping, short run production, of course, you know, special effects and sort of prop making and stuff like that. Everybody has always loved our what we called our F series. F is could be flexible. F could also be fast. It was really kind of a fast, flexible system. And a lot of these systems had you know, less than ten minute work time. Most of them were like five to seven minutes, uh, low viscosity, but they cured quickly. We were able to demold them quickly, but they had really good physical properties. They weren't some of these your you know flexible your things that you may have been encountered over the years that you just set them out and they turn into goo after six months or something like that, or they you start leaving a wet marks in the table uh, because they're leaching out things. And so the F-Series has always been very, very popular. So um, over the last couple of years, we've gone through a little bit of a, um, just updating things, making things more ROHS compliant. We ship product all around the world. And so it's like we're always trying to be ahead of the curve when it comes to a lot of those um, you know, regulations and stuff. And obviously, we're always wanting to improve. So long story short, the FP series is actually kind of the latest and greatest of our what we call our fast production. Um, we initially came out with it from a 40 Shore A, which is kind of a, you know, soft, but it's not quite, it's just a little bit below like a, an automobile type. 40 Shore A, and then we went all the way up to a 90, and everybody's just been loving them. They're very user friendly. We, I mean, what have we, we've got all sorts of crazy parts with it. We brushed them into molds, we've rotocast them, everything's great, and they, and they, oh, yeah, that's right, Batman, which stay tuned for that because that's coming kind of along. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've probably, they've probably seen Batman. Come up in our time. recent Instagram video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out our Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> if, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, go watch our Instagram latest uh, video with Batman. Um, and so we slowly worked our way into making a 15 and a 25 Shore A. So it's FP15, uh, FP25, and like they're just now hitting. In fact, you can go on the website and they've, they've literally just gone up on there. Um, and that's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So we've got a we've actually got a little bit of a surprise here. This is live. We haven't we literally just made this this morning because this is literally just happening this week, mm -hmm. uh, getting this material out. And we wanted to do kind of a, a sample part that we've done in some other materials in the past. We wanted to see what the FP15 would do, and then we backed it with our 266 film. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? So what else are we gonna chit chat about? Uh, we're going to go over BR75D, which we kind of talked about uh, with Casey a few weeks ago, and we've talked about it several times um, before, too. And uh, different glues are Barium BJB CA glue and accelerator, and our new AP1230 and AP3220. Yeah. Yeah, we've, um, we've, we've typically in the past have not jumped into the adhesives, you know, just from a, you know, our, our specialty has always been the emphasis on castable materials and then obviously our silicones to support from the mold making. Um, but we've actually, BJB, going years back, before my time, BJB was has always been a very big industrial, high-tech, we've worked with a lot of aerospace companies, uh, certainly locally here in Southern California when there used to be a lot more aerospace around here. BJB used to be very, very heavy into epoxies, um, so things like high temperature epoxies, surface coats, aluminum filled epoxies, and so all this sort of stuff. But we also had a lot of really nice uh, epoxy adhesives, and actually there's still a couple that we're still making today. The uh, TC4206 and 4207 are great. A lot of guys that are using those these days are going to be people who are bonding a lot like wood, like boat builders, and, and you can do wood to fiberglass or fiberglass parts. So it's just been used and it's been a great product. Um, but these days, a lot of people are looking for like more two component and, and our real specialty is to go the urethane route and there's a number of reasons uh, why. We'll kind of get into that in, in a minute. But then also too, like you mentioned, our, um, our CA, uh, you know, um, Instacure and then the accelerator. We use that constantly. Everybody needs to have a bottle of super, super glue around, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, and the kicker, we always comment, the kicker smells so nice. It, just, it does. Oh, I'd like very, to use it as perfume. <laughs> very pleasant aroma. I wouldn't recommend it as perfume, but people who are into building stuff, we kind of like, we have a thing for that stuff. Mm -hmm. It just smells so good. It needs something cool to be made. Exactly. Yeah. Is so, trying to... Oh, yeah. Is that the Claudia? <laughs> That's our, Claudia is our receptionist, and she loves watching, and as she should. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Claudia. Claudia. <laughs> Did I just say Claudia? Um, 
So, having said that, and then, uh, and then a little bit later on, we're going to do some show and tell and talk about our upcoming shows. Yes. So let's get into, okay, so let's start off with the FP15, FP25. Okay. So, what we did, go ahead and uh, you explain. Jenkins. What did we do? Okay, well, we have this Angelina Jolie live cast, and we decided to try out our new FP15 in it. Um, we kind of poured it in rolled it around, did a few brush-ups on the high points, and then came back with a second layer that went on really nice and just by rolling it around kind of uh, full rotor casting. And it turned out really great when we backed it with our foam, and I'm excited to take it out. Yeah, so in the, in the first layer, we went really thin. We just kind of brushed it in, but we ended up just kind of more or less slush casting it. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about the FP series I mentioned before is it in a 100-gram mass, it, it's roughly about a five, four to five minute work time. So obviously when you put it in a thinner coat, you've got to chase it for a little bit longer. But it's kind of nice because it's very thin in the beginning, so it picks up all that detail. And we didn't even vacuum it. We just mixed it, dumped it in, we put a little bit of uh, pigment into it. Our urethane uh, pigments are 6800 series. A little bit of, our, our secret is a little bit of our flesh and just a dab of our uh, yellow oxide sort of takes away the, the pink. Yeah, the, the pink. But you can kind of mix and match and make your own kind of things. Are we any tools? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No. I put some good release on that. Um, and then at a certain point, the stuff kind of starts to get a little bit thicker, and then that's where you can kind of brush and start to build the, uh, the layers. And then we came in with a second coat. Oh, yeah. And this is our Poly Soft 1 foam, which is also the, the real name is TC266. Um, just look up our flexible polyurethane foams on the website. Um, but that's been super popular density and, and, and squishiness, if you will. Uh, we don't really use the word barometer on foam because that's not necessarily the right term. Oh man, this is exciting. This is Christmas for all of us, by the way. This is like... We love making angels. Yeah, she's popular. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to see is you're going to see two layers of... FP15, which is a 15 show rate. So your skin is roughly, depending on where you're pushing on the skin, you know, if it's in a firmer area, anywhere from about like a 5 to like a 15 show rate is a good simulation. And um, obviously other areas, fatty areas, could be uh, lower. But it's a good starting point. She looks great. Oh, yeah. Minus right. the flashing. I don't mind that. Because I, again, just remembered it. But she looks great, super squishy. And we just poured her like an hour ago. Right. <laughs> it was... We've been scrambling to get it done. So yeah, but it's it's fresh. It's good. Very fresh. Well, surface, I mean... how's the surface tech? No, nope, Any... none, zero. Yeah. Yeah, zero that's... tech. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's, it's perfect, it's just... minus my sweaty palms, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but... yeah, so what's really great about this is um, at this point, you know, with these FP series, they're a very clean system. And what I mean by that is, they're not going to be leaching oils or whatever. You know, we didn't do a bunch of stuff to, to junk it up to make it, you know, super low viscosity. We, it's this surface is very paintable, so you could use a variety of uh, paints, popular airbrush paints that sort of, uh, a lot of the special effects people use. But we also have a lineup of what we call our flex paints. We have our SC89, which is a solvent-based, uh, sort of solvent-reduced one-part paint that dries very quickly. But obviously, it's solvent. You got to wear you know heavy-duty mask and everything. Um, and then we have a newer version, SC92, which is water-based. And then actually we're working on a newer one that's going to have a little bit better UV stability. But that's water-based, so you can use a lot of water-based pigments. And, and that one's going to be matte, too, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to have some options for gloss versus matte. And everything. So that actually, that's really cool. We're it still cool. testing that. But you could easily come back using this as a base color and come back and make it as realistic as you need or want. Yeah. Um, and it's your thing. So everything wants to stick to it, <laughs> you know, as long as you clean the surface well. So... Man, this seems like I know, I want to make good. a zombie body now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is good. So, like, literally, this is, what, an hour old, maybe? Yeah. 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 And it, we're already handling it. Tear strength feels pretty good, so. So if you need awesome. to pop out materials, this is a good one to do. Yeah. And we do have another series that actually came out before the FP series, and that was generically, like, our first sort of iteration of the F series. So what we did is we used to have, like, the F42 and the F50 and this and that. We did... F140, 150, 160, and so the big difference between those is they're still 
relatively fast. Uh, the work times are less than 10 minutes. The demold time isn't quite as fast as this. However, that particular series, the F1 series, if you think it in terms of Formula One, you know, you think of it like that, an easy way to remember, super high performance. I have, I've shown before a couple times, um, I made skateboard wheels out of our F190, and they've blown me away. I mean, I don't necessarily tell people, yeah, I make skateboard wheels out of your things, because usually that's a separate type of what they call hot pour system, but um, it has better, but I've been riding the thing for months, and it hasn't worn down. I mean, they just keep going. So the F1 series is super high performance, high tear strength, high everything. But like many systems, you kind of have to, uh, you know, it's worth the wait. So if you need, you have an application where tear strength is everything or it's a very highly high performance thing where you need every last bit of physical properties, you look at the F1 series. Um, that's not to put down the FP series because they actually have very good physical properties, very similar to our old F series, and everybody was perfectly happy with that as well. So we didn't really sacrifice on there, but the F1 series is, like I said, we just got a notch above. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to do better, so that's kind of that. So that's about it. But um, you should be able to go on the website and and find the FP series. But now we got the 15 and the 25, so we're excited. Yeah. So if you got any questions, um, give us a call. Mm -hmm. And being a urethane skin, they bond tenaciously to urethane foam behind that. Mm -hmm. It's not like you've got an issue where it's a silicone skin and you're trying to figure out how to make it stick, you know, to back it up with something. Um, this is, you'll, you'll tear foam before you can ever break the bond between yeah, no... the skin and the foam. It's, it's incredible. It's really cool. Uh, cool technique, cool stuff. Yeah. It's not coming <laughs> So, uh, so we'll be moving along in, uh, what's our, what's our next category? I think we're going to talk about the R75D. The R75D. Now, the R75D, if you've been watching, the last couple of uh, filming at the Mouth Fridays, uh, we had uh, Casey Mooseman in, and she did that really cool uh, pestilence sound. Mm -hmm. Wait, here, keep talking. I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen here for everybody. How about that? Yeah, so she did the really cool pestilence fountain, and um, we helped her with the molding and casting of it, and so we did a brush-up silicone mold, and then we did a jacket mold on top of that with the BR75D, um, and that just helps make it super durable and strong um, the stuff you can basically drive a car over and that's how strong it is so it's a very exciting uh, mold making material so give me one second here because apparently a, hold on a sec here BJB Facebook I had another Facebook page up so pardon me for a second here it's a good substitute for fiberglass too mm -hmm. None of the smells, and you don't have to deal with any of that. Give me one second while I. Uh... All right. Here we go. It'll be up in just a second. Yeah, because we had, we did a live. We did a live Facebook live from um, from her. Examples. Is we just did this uh, little car with the VR 75D and then backed it with some rigid foam. And that turned out really well. It's, again, super strong but lightweight. So, ah, okay, so here's. <laughs> so this was the pestilence fountain that ended up making that was on the. Uh, which show was it? Conjoin 7. Conjoin. So we basically made a, uh, a jacket mold with the BR-75D. Anyway, so this is a good example of that. And uh, pause for just a second here, and I'll come back to that. So there we go. Cool. But yeah, if you would go onto our Facebook page, you'll be able to see the, uh, the jacket mold. There we go. Awesome. Alright, so, so BR75D, we, um, we did do a, we did a video a little while back, that was the, make, how to make a foam prop, um, and that was, actually there's a lot of techniques shown in that video, but the material that was featured in it was the BR75D. Now, BR stands for brushable, we have a BR, um, 
we have other BR systems that are also in the uh, elastomeric flexible uh, as well. But this stuff's really, really unique. And so, yeah, grab, well here, let's grab this one. This is a good, easy one to manage. Um, this is a cool example because on the back here, basically you're seeing the BR75D. We had a model of basically like this car. And we did a very, um, very typical, very common, we did a, a silicone brush up over the top of it, did two or three layers to build up at a certain thickness, but obviously this is not self-supportive. So then we brushed the BR75D on the back. And so this is a very rigid material. Um, we didn't have to add any additional fibers, no fiberglass, carbon, none of that, no glass. Didn't have to mess with it. We literally just brush it on, it's beautiful. If you go to the um, videos that we do have on Facebook where we're showing uh, cases, there's a lot more to it. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to do more videos with this stuff and then on the product page itself. But in the video, we also do go through the process when we make this bat. Um, we, we do show the whole entire process. But what's, what's really cool about this stuff is it's super easy. Mm -hmm. You get about a 10 minute, 10 to like 12 minute working time where you're, where you're brushing around. You're not rushing. So you can get a mold this size or maybe even bigger all covered. In, in, and by the time you go back, you're mixing another batch mm -hmm. and coming back, you know, the stuff is starting to gel and you can come back and do another layer within, I mean, easily, with, depending on temperatures, easily between like maybe 15, 20 minutes. So you're not super rushed, but it's still pretty quick. Mm -hmm. The other cool thing is this is its natural color, um, but you can very easily pigment it with any of our 6800 series pigments, which pretty much goes into most of the products we make, um, except for like the uh, water-based stuff. But this bright orange, um, this dark blue, yeah. blue. Yeah, so, um, and we also use it as a functional to show the different layers, so we know which layer has adequate coverage. Yeah, this one's got Sort of the natural color and it's heavy. silicone. Well, silicone's heavy. Mm -hmm. The the material itself, because you can do it in a fairly thin uh, wall thickness, ends up being super light. This is heavy because it's got a lot of silicone on it. Silicone's fairly dense, but this is cool. I mean, it picks up all the detail. Um, and what's great about this is this stuff is very very high impact. I mean, we've we've dropped this tool several times on the ground, unfortunately being clumsy, but it's never broken. Uh, it's very, very tough. And you're not going to do that with a plaster mold. And if you were to do a polyester and fiberglass mold, number one, you're dealing with polyester, it's going to stink. Number two, you have to do all that brushing out of all the fiberglass and wetting the stuff out. You don't have to do that at all. The stuff just brushes out. It's like cold cream consistency. And then, um, you know, it's, it's stiff, it's stable, it's got good heat distortion. I've seen some of the other sort of brushable kind of systems out there, and the one complaint a lot of people have told us is it's not stable. It's not dimensionally stable if it sees higher temperatures, whatever. This stuff, don't quote me, but on the data sheet, I mean, we're 150 plus Fahrenheit uh, heat distortion, which is very, very good. So it's, it's not going to go like a wet noodle <laughs> on a hot summer day. So I that's was really cool. um, talking to Rob Friedis on a forum, and he was asking, is there any shrinkage with this material? That was one question. Okay, that's a, well, that's a great question. Um, because there isn't a bunch of solvents in this, and anything like in polyester, it's like 20 to 30% solvent. Okay, that, when that solvent goes somewhere, it has to, it, something happens, and usually that ends up with shrinkage. This material is very low shrinkage. And you're also not building it up in such a thick mass that it's going to create excess exotherm, build up heat, and then that's going to additionally cause shrinkage. So we've seen very good dimensional stability, even in larger tools. Casey's tool was big, and then we another tool we've seen, can't talk about, but another tool we've seen was huge. Yeah. It was a monster. It was like four to five feet long. Yes. And it was, it was really good. Um, so stability-wise and shrinkage-wise, it, it really hasn't shown to be... Uh, that big of a deal. And you can drill it, you know, drill it to bolt it together, mm -hmm. integrate the keys like we've shown another one. So, yeah, if you watch that, um, that bat video, not Batman video, but the bat, making of the bat, uh, you can check that out. And so, yeah. Oh, and, well, and then, I'll tell you what, you, how about you describe the, um, how we made this? Because this is actually sort of the same product. Uh, which, like the brushing in? Yeah. Part of it? Okay. Yeah. 
So for this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> okay. So for the car, we ended up just kind of brushing it in like we would normally. Uh, I think we did a couple layers and then we backed it with foam like we would anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and then because of the the pressure of the foam, it kind of helped press up against the walls and made this really nice finish. Um, and it just looks great. And then with the color in it too, of course, makes it really stand out. <laughs> Yeah, that so that first layer's got basically you know some bright orange pigment, and then the the foam behind it actually has got some yellow pigment in it, pigment in it, just so you can see the the distinct difference between the two. And that's the thing with foams is um, you know you can make a very very structurally strong but lightweight part. And if you're trying to make parts and you're trying to rely on just the skin of the foam, and if you've worked with foam, you know there's going to be it's going to be you know almost perfect, then you're going to have one area that's going to have a bunch of porosity and, and, and little bubbles in this and that. And it's just like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have to deal with that. Well, if you're making a part like that, you could brush in conceivably something like this and back with foam. Now, there are people who use products like our TC890, and that's a castable system, low viscosity, and they'll dump it in there, and they'll keep chasing it as it keeps wanting to flow. Mm -hmm. This material will go up a surface and, and hang, so that way you're not having to chase it for so long, so you can concentrate on moving to other areas, which allows you basically to do larger and larger parts. Um, good example, when we were originally developing this product and sort of beta testing it, if you look on our YouTube channel, channel under the uh, testimonials, you'll see the Star Wars, yeah, it was the, uh, the Star Wars, well, it was the Sandcrawler mm -hmm. from uh, Star Wars Celebration, uh, Michael McMaster and Gordon Tarplay. He did all those feet using this technique. He basically brushed in BR-75E and then just dumped a lightweight, rigid foam behind it, like a two-and-a-half-pound foam foamed up. And they made these parts so fast. They had to make tons of these. Go go look at that video. The, the sand crawler is, is absolutely enormous. It's to scale. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's huge. huge. <laughs> and they only did, like, a tiny little part of it. But it was still um, massively, massively huge. And that was super, super cool. But, uh, I'm just going to bring up some, uh, some other stuff here. Um, cool. Just checking here. Just gonna see if anybody's asking any more questions. All right. So if you have any questions on that, or um, you want to see some more, it's um, we're it, it should it should have been on the website today. Look for it Monday or Tuesday. Um, it's just like so much, you know. We're, we're we have to dot all our eyes and cross all our T's to make sure everything is ready to go. And uh, that product will be hitting the website very, very soon. So a lot of people who've seen it, expressing great interest in it. Um, if you know, if you need to do like small to medium sized molds, it's perfect stuff because you don't have to cut fiberglass and wet it all out and this and that. You just mix up a batch. It starts off very, very liquid, very easy to mix, and then after about 30, 40 seconds, it's the coolest thing. It all of a sudden just slows down and turns into almost like a cold cream. Is the best way to describe it's very it. Very buttery. And buttery, yeah. Fun. Yeah, and you just brush it around with a cheap chip brush, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know you just you just kind of go to town. So you don't really need anything super fancy. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's BR seventy five D. So what's on what's next on the list? I think we're gonna go to the CA glue and accelerator. All right, go for it. A nice Instacure. Uh, this is kind of our version of our Instacure and the Instaset, but this stuff works amazing. Um, I use it for pretty much everything now. So. <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't you can't not have CA glue in the shop because Correct. it does so much. And um, you know, price wise, we this stuff is you know cheaper than going down to the hobby shop. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, because you know sometimes you go down there and you're paying like ten bucks for like a two ounce bottle, and mm -hmm. um, so this plus the, the appropriate accelerator, it's a good combo. This is the thin, very very thin, super thin. So it's not like a gap setting. Um, we have something else next to show you if you've got something uh, of that nature. So, but yeah, we use you can't not have CA glue. So it's kind of if you're placing an order for some other stuff, pick that up. It's very it's very very competitively priced and um, it, it works great. And then um, what, what else we got? Next is the twelve thirty flexible. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And then after that is the rigid thirty two twenty. Yeah. Okay. So we've been sort of teasing about our adhesive line for a little while. Um, we've just been doing a lot of testing, just 
narrowing down things, what is going to be the best sort of offer for the uh, you know general market, and then fine tuning it. And we've got basically what we call the AP AP series, which is basically um, there's going to be our, our adhesives. So we've got AP. 1230, and don't worry, don't have to memorize all these numbers. Um, we'll, we've got a little bit of a system to help describe what the numbers mean, you know, in terms of hardness and work time and, and fixotropic nature and stuff like that. The 1230 is a flexible polyurethane adhesive. So basically, you've got an A and a B, okay, and you've got a, um, basically, this is a, a very common glue gun that you can get from McMaster Car or whatever. Um, we this I'm trying to think if they're on the website right now, but all of this will be there. However, there are a lot of people who already use this, and they use other other competitor products uh, for adhesives. It's a very common sort of number one, the tube, the cartridge system, um, and then the gun. So you may already have this combo. But if not, this gun is relatively inexpensive. It's uh, it's not like you know some hundred dollar thing. It's it's actually fairly inexpensive. And then you've got the cartridge. So basically. People are always calling us because we have so many great elastomeric products, soft, flexible products people are using for um, special effects, medical training devices, prototypes, this and that. But they're hard to glue to. They're hard to bond to. So it's kind of hard to find an adhesive that will bend with a material that's so stretchy and has such high elongation. So we basically have been fine-tuning a product to uh, marry those two types of products. So. I made up some cool uh, cure samples to show the, uh, the sort of adhesive in action. So this particular product here, these are some samples, cured samples of our F125. Oh, okay. So that's our F125, uh, two pieces, and we used a small bonding patch sort of in the area to overlap, and um, that is the AP1230. So, you will literally, you'll break the urethane before you break the bond. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. So, this is kind of like one of those, we should put it up behind like two pickup trucks and like pull it or something <laughs> like that. But, the lower durometer urethanes historically have been hard to bond to. And it's not necessarily that the materials, the materials themselves are hard to bond to, it's hard to find an adhesive with that much adhesion plus the flexibility and the elongation to, to, to go well with a system like this. So obviously, I mean, you can just, look at that. I mean, that's an adhesive. If you tried that with an epoxy, it's so stiff, it's probably gonna pop off. So that's the 12, um, 1230. And, and we've had a few customers that were begging for this type of thing for a while, and we've had a beta tested with a few people. Everybody's loving it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good sort of general purpose adhesive. Uh, and then we also have the AP, 3220, which I think is actually is on the website. The 1220, or 1230, excuse me, should be hitting um, next week. We're just going to show a couple of things. The 3220 is a rigid, um, what we would term rigid, more for rigid products. So if you have something like, this is like our TC890, which is like an ABS-like rigidity, and then this is our FD60, which is um, like polypropylene. So it's it's... Not quite as stiff, it's got a little bit of bend, but it's still a hard product. It's a, a, what we call a semi-rigid, a very tough product. And trying to find something that will not be so stiff that it's brittle and still have really good adhesion. And this stuff is like, I mean, it's, it's really on there. It's really good. If you prep the surfaces correct, you, you know, maybe rough them up a little bit, wipe it down with some alcohol or some isopropyl alcohol, make sure there's no mold release on it. This stuff is great, and we've been beta testing this one in a lot of different areas, and um, this is sort of like the latest, greatest. And, and also, so a lot of people go, well, we'll stick to other things. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the great thing about these systems we found. It sticks to a lot of different substrates. We're talking metal, other plastics, um, just a variety of things. We know which of our BJB products, we know we'll f which product will fit with what, and that's really nice because... In a day and age of if you try to call up and get tech help for a lot of adhesives, they'll say, well, the manufacturer says this. But they can't tell you because they've never actually tried it. We've, we've tried it. We've, we've in-house. We've been gluing it to all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Some of our people have taken it home to fix stuff at home, come back and say, it's stuck to this and stuck to that and uh, fix, the, fix the problem. And, um, yeah, so it's really good stuff. And an example of 
This is like a 95 Shore, which is was fairly hard, a little bit harder than like a, a skateboard wheel. And then this is a 3160, which is like an automobile tire. And once again, I mean, the stuff is just, it's, it's on really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to actually give sort of a little bit of an example of what you get when you buy these adhesive systems. Um, I've got the gun, and actually I'll kind of do a little, a little display to kind of show you kind of what it looks like. Um, and before I get to that, I have my safety glasses on. We wanted to, we wanted to remind everybody that, you know, whenever you're working with uh, anything from, you know, FinCA to um, any of these, you know, liquid products, uh, casting materials, you know, your eyes are something that you can't, you can't replace, not yet. And, uh, you know, we're not 3D printing eyes just yet. So whenever you're in the shop, just do yourself a favor because it's always complacency always gets you. Wear your, wear your glasses. Um, I picked up these silly little fabric um, restraining things, you know, and now I have my glasses up with me all, at all times. And when we go in the back in our, in our shop area, you have to have safety glasses and it's, it's always a pain to have to remember to get it. So I'm always doing this. So when I do my demo, of course I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Because my luck, <laughs> something will happen and it'll squirt back up at me. It was got hers. Um, so I'm going to do the, uh, oh, you know, before I get to that, let me show you real quick. So when you do purchase, like, the adhesive system, the adhesive cartridges, it comes in a nice sealed Mylar package. Okay, this is very, very good for, um, it seems like overkill, because, you know, you go to Home Depot and you see them just kind of in small little packaging. But this, these are your things, so we want to really protect them from moisture. So these come in a sealed Mylar package, which will keep the stuff uh, shelf life in a much better, uh, much better manner. So when you get it, basically what you get, there's a, uh, a little silica gel packet to, to also help absorb moisture over time. Okay, so you get the cartridge. Um, there's a little cap on here, okay? And you basically, you'll get two mixed tubes and you'll be able to purchase additional mixed tubes from us. That's not a problem. But the nice thing is at least you get a couple shots out of this because you may have an application where you don't really need to use all of it at once. These are 50 mil cartridges. For some applications, this is a lot of material. For some applications, you're going to use three because I don't know. But either way, you get these and we'll be able to um, uh, furnish additional if you feel like you're going to a lot of them. But it's super, super simple. Basically, the gun is like this. You literally just load it in. Okay. Pop it back. Okay. You got a little, a little thing there. And then this little cap comes off. A lot of people always ask, do you save the cap? I'll show you. No, you don't want to save the cap because if you pull this off and you don't remember which way it was, and you put the A on the B and the B on the A, it's going to glue itself on. So this, pretty much once it comes off, is done. And then the, uh, the little mix tube, very easily, uh, sorry, awkward, awkward position. Right now. Basically, it just pops on like that. You just give it a twist, and it's locked. It's not going to come off. Okay, so at this point, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm show you here. Okay, so these adhesives, they're sort of a good mixture when it comes to um, its thickness, sort of the, the bead it lays down, I'm going to show you. Usually what we tell people is when you first initially start squeezing the trigger and dispensing material, it sometimes comes out, the A might come out a little bit before the B, and you don't want that to end up on your part because if you get a little bit of unmixed material, obviously it's not going to cure well and it might break. So we always say do a little waste shot. We're not saying this so you'll buy more adhesive. We're saying it because you may end up with a bond failure if you get a little bit of A before the B, okay? And it's very simple. You don't have to dispense a whole lot extra, but you just do a tiny, tiny little uh, little B, okay? So, like I said, not a whole lot. Oh, thanks. All right, so if you're doing like a thin bead line, you can kind of see that it actually lays down a fairly nice little, it's not too thick, um, if I kind of go like that, you can see it actually does move around and that will allow you to position stuff. It's also not so fast that you've got to do it within, you know, 20-30 seconds. You've got a little bit of work time, but we're still only, we're still talking like maybe a minute, minute and a half. So, obviously I've got mixed material in here and you don't want it going off from here. So I've still got some plenty of time to kind of do a little bit of a, a more bonding so you're not so, so rushed, okay? So obviously I did this because I want you to be able to see it holds a pretty good thick bead. Um, it will slump a little bit, but typically you're not gonna be doing 
that thick on maybe a vertical surface. But even if you are, it will hold the shape pretty good. Um, and then you would come in, apply whatever you need to bond, clamp it in place for, depending on the bond line, the thicker it is, the quicker it kicks off, the thinner the bond line, the longer it takes. So usually we say somewhere around 10 minutes, it could be a little quicker, might be a little longer, just depending on what you're doing. That's pretty good. And the nice thing is, like I said, I can wait probably a minute and then come back and continue to, to dispense, okay? But obviously if I set this down and leave it for a good five minutes, 10 minutes, the mixed tube is gonna start solidifying up here. So, if that were the case and the stuff goes off and you need to dispense more, then you're gonna to wanna to grab another uh, mixed tube and just replace it and go and just continue uh, gluing. You'll wanna do a little way shot and then continue gluing. But if you're done with it, and what a lot of times we do around here is you can just, you literally just leave it like this, let it set, and this essentially forms a cap. It, it closes it off, it can't mix or anything. And you may end up with a little bit of a sort of some uncured stuff down here. If you see that, you can just manually just wipe it off. And then you just pull this off, put the new one when you're ready to go, and go. So we don't need to worry about that whole replacing the cap thing. Just leave the mix tip on there. This will, will solidify and it actually will do a very good job of preventing any ambient moisture, air, uh, ending up in there. So that's it. So you could conceivably just, so you just do this, pull back like a caulking gun, like this, and then, um, yeah, I could just put this over to the side and go do something else. So really great adhesive uh, system. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call application-wise. You know, if you think we, you've got an application where you've got a hard to bond to uh, substrate, but uh, we know urethane-wise which products go very well with which adhesive, and uh, we're really excited. Everybody who's tested it has absolutely loved it. But I don't know, uh, based on the um, folks you've talked to about this stuff, what are some of the applications you've sort uh, of getting interest for from? For the flexible stuff, I was curious how it works with um, like foam fabrication. I have a few friends that make like armor and whatnot, so I sent out some tests to a friend, uh, Charles Conley, and he's going to test that out for me and let me know because he's always making really fantastic armor, foam armor, foam pack. So we'll see because I think that's a good application, I feel like. Um, because you need it to be strong, obviously, you're walking around at a con all day yeah. and taking pictures and you don't want stuff to start separating. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so we've had a few people beta testing it on even some costume type mm -hmm. stuff and everybody's loving it. Yeah. And uh, we got some options. I mean, a lot of people think of adhesives is just hard, like epoxy and whatnot. And this flexible stuff, this AP 12, 12, uh, 1230, is <laughs> it's it's really something special. And um, you know, you can call us and ask us questions. It's not just throwing a dart in a, in a catalog and trying to choose the right glue and finding out that uh, you bought something that's not going to work. So yeah, so definitely, definitely um, excited about that. So that kind of wraps up the uh, you know product end of stuff. We've got. Um, we got show and tell next, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you got? Well, I had a friend message me a couple weeks ago, and he was actually originally talking to me about foam, and then he was asking, he's a prop maker, Jack Torrance, um, um, in the Midwest, and he was talking about how he occasionally has these giant molds. He makes um, parts for haunts, so like, say, a corpse. Uh, and half the time he does it by himself and was curious if there's any way to get a spray skin to be able to spray it himself and then quick close the mold, throw some foam in there and be like a one-man show. So we kind of decided that we wanted to do some tests because we hadn't done that application but we were pretty sure that we could figure it out and I think we tried with the FP40. Um, mm -hmm. Granted this was a smaller part uh, you probably want to do it with a larger mold, but it actually came out really well. The details look perfect. It feels great, looks great, and it was nice and strong, and it's super fast, and it was really easy to do. I watched you do it, and it just took, like, a couple seconds, and it was done. Yeah. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah, a lot of people are always wanting to spray things, but you have to sort of commit to the... Uh, this sort of setup because you need the side-by-side -side dispense cartridge, you need an air compressor, mm -hmm. and you, you, it's, honestly, I wouldn't, this is actually not even still too small for what mm -hmm. I would typically recommend, unless there was maybe some more depth, there's a little bit more volume to it. But basically, because um, once you start spraying, you've got to go. So usually it's actually bigger tools. 
On something like this, honestly, you would probably opt to just brush it because you can sit there and chase it. It's not a big deal. So what we had done was we took the FP40, which is a one-to-one -one by a weight and volume system. We, uh, we boosted up the catalyst level a little bit using our um, SC24 accelerator. I think I put about like a 5% or so. I was really curious how it was going to work because I hadn't done that at that high of a level yet. And uh, yeah, we sprayed it. And, you know, it's, uh, you'll have to do sort of layered thin coats because it doesn't spray like polyurea systems and stuff where it dries like that. It, it hits the surface and then it kind of flows, which is good because it picks up all this detail. Like there, there isn't a single, in the, in the areas we were able to spray easily, there's not a single void or bubble. I mean, it just, it flowed beautifully. Mm -hmm. But you're not gonna wanna sit there and flood in the same area because obviously you're gonna build up more and it's gonna, it's gonna slump. So, like I said, another kind of creative uh, application that we thought, hey, somebody asked this question, let's try it and uh, let's go for it. We've built spray systems in the past, but um, we wanted to sort of prove that you can maybe have a one material and have it be well-rounded and use it in different applications, and so we, we gave it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, good idea. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, cool. And then, um, let's see. Oh, I got a show and tell. You know me, I'm a geek. I like everything RC, quadcopters, airplanes, cars a little bit. So I've been working on, and this is actually going to be a shout out, because um, I 3D printed this cool um, flying wing. This is, uh, it, it is powered, it's not a glider. So it's got the motor in the back, completely 3D printed, all of it. It's actually printed in um, Matter Hackers uh, PLA on our Airwolf Axiom. And man, I'm impressed. Uh, I've uh, 3D printed RC stuff has been coming along, a lot more popular in like the quadcopters and drones and stuff. But for flying airframes to make something light enough and strong enough, that's kind of been it's more uh, engineering and technique than really materials. But then some of that is also materials. So the cool thing is, is I actually put all this together with our Instacure glue, so it bonds the PLA very, very well. Uh, there was a lot of pieces to this, and um, yeah. So I'm kind of excited. I'm working on a bunch of different sort of uh, projects um, with sort of flying 3D printed things, and um, it's great. It's, you know, it's great to have all these good products like this, you know, at, at your beck and call, because mm -hmm. I'm able to do some uh, really cool stuff. But I'll tell you what, I'm gonna segue into the next chapter using this, because we've got coming up actually in a, a few weeks, um, we're gonna have uh, Dave Gaylord, and he is uh, sort of President, co-founder, co-owner of uh, Matter Hackers. Um, they're a big, basically they sell 3D printers, they sell all the filaments you could think of, and they're a really great source for uh, tech, uh, technology, new products and stuff like that. They also have their own software uh, for 3D printers and stuff. And so, hey, shout out, here's your PLA, Dave, so thanks. Um, that that's gonna be, be really cool. March 10th? Yeah, that's March 10th. Mm -hmm. And um, who's and then who's on the next show? Next show is the twenty fourth, and that's going to be Josh Foster with Synapsis FX, and he's going to help test our new one to one silicone line, and we're going to be making some silicone prosthetics. So that would be real fun if you're interested in seeing that. Join us next time on the twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Um, I don't have a personally a special effects background, um, and I am a fairly much, I'm a new when it comes to the prosthetic stuff. Um, I come from more of the industrial end of things. And so for me, this stuff is super fascinating. And if you're already into this, I, I still think you're going to be fascinated by it. Um, what are, let's name drop, what, what are some of the shows this guy's done? Because he's, he's, he's legit. Yeah, he uh, has been doing Z Nation for the past few years. And then he also did like Sharknado. And, Sharknado. Yeah, he's got, I went to his shop and actually has the shark still in there up on his mezzanine looking over and all bloody. And it's, it's awesome. So Josh, bring the shark. I know, it's bring so it. big though. <laughs> shark. Sharknado. I know, that's such a good movie. I know. It's so bad, it's good. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm jealous, that's pretty neat. Yeah, he's uh, the sci-fi channel, Z Nation. Mm -hmm. He's been doing that for a long time. and um, He's actually one of the people who made a really, really cool mold mm -hmm. out of BR-75D. Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to us, I, I talked to him a long, long time ago about materials and whatnot, and he kind of went off and... He went on this walkabout making this cool uh, show on sci-fi, and uh, unbeknownst to me, he fell in love with this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And so, um, <laughs> yeah, so he's another uh, one of the people that is a proponent of it. So The way he did it, too, it was cool. He did first a couple layers of a detail coat with the 1630 and then backed it yep. with the BR-75E. Yeah. And I think he threw some chop in there, too, just for good measure. But that thing was sturdy. Like yeah. it was not going anywhere. Yeah. And luckily because it was a ginormous mold. So yeah. But it was it was pretty cool. And that's gonna be a cool project that eventually we'll be able to uh, talk about. Mm-hmm. Can't mm-hmm. right now, but um, it's all hush hush. But yeah. so that's it. So hey, if uh, you got any questions on any of that stuff, feel free to give us a shout. Mm-hmm. We're uh, always happy to uh, talk to customers, uh, help you problem solve, check help, customer service is just um, we pride ourselves a lot with that and um, yeah, it's a fun place to work. So, you know, we enjoy helping our customers out. So, it's not a problem if you pick up the phone and call us, or if you're scared to call and talk to people, you can email us, you can chat on our website. Um, Comment on any of the videos. Yeah, go on the, the videos. We're, we have a really good uh, sort of response on a lot of the YouTube videos. If you have something specific someone was asking about, you know, doing fin wall parts, yeah, ask, ask on the, uh, the video itself because I'm sure someone else would like. Probably has the same question, and you know, if we get on there and we can answer it for you, um, it kind of helps everybody in the sort of the community uh, fashion that is the internet. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but exciting, yeah. So the next show is going to be really, really cool, really good, and uh, and then the next show after that, like I said, is going to be uh, Dave uh, Baylor from uh, Matter Hackers. So a lot of cool stuff coming up, a lot of good okay. stuff. So as always, Troy Peterson. Thank you, Troy. All right, so uh, we'll check you out next time. See you later. Thanks. Bye.